Welcome, everybody, to the March 3rd, 2016 edition of Financial Freedom Classroom. We accelerate your results. Financial Freedom Classroom is a uh, service that we put together, uh, myself, John Locke, and Sherry Locke. I am the owner of a company called Locke in Your Success LLC. We train traders on trading stock options in the stock market, and we do coaching and education as well as trading performance. I am a master practitioner of linguistic programming, also a master hypnotist and a strategic intervention coach, and I use those skills to help traders perform better in the market. Sherry, who is my wife, has managed many successful businesses with me, and uh, in the education, automotive, uh, real estate, computer, consulting, and coaching business. We are also active real estate investors. We do some spec home building. We do rehabs and rentals. And we also uh, invest in and sometimes provide, provide loans and guidance to small businesses. Before we get going tonight, we just want to let you know that the information provided in the presentation is general information only. We are not financial advisors, we're not accountants, and we are not attorneys, and therefore any information we provide in any of those areas is merely our opinion. And we would encourage you to seek professional advice in the, in the area you wish to pursue prior to making any decisions. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Uh, tonight, I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to let Sherry take over and talk about who we have for a special guest. Well, tonight we're going to talk about 10 tips to spruce up your house to sell fast. So if anybody's tried to sell their house before and has waited and waited and waited, this is the webinar for you. Or if you're an investor and you want to sell your house, you want to sell um, a flip or if you have a rental unit, Amy is the lady to talk to. She is uh, Amy Parker of Parker House Designs. And she uses a practical approach and offers home staging solutions that provide a memorable first impression, one strong enough to prompt a walkthrough and ultimately an offer. Um, one of the things that Amy and I were talking about before was the importance of being on the internet and having good pictures. So it's important that that first impression nowadays be in the photograph um, online. Um, and Amy's a graduate of the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, and she lives in New Hampshire with her husband and two children. She is also an active member of both the Association Design Education and Real Estate Staging Association. So welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. Thanks. And th we are thrilled to have you. I'm just going to bring over your presentation. And we can start from the beginning and learn how to spruce up our house. Exactly. And you said it. Um, that was a great introduction. Thank you. Um, it really is important to get your home ready for the photo shoot. So when I'm going in and talking to people in consultations, you know, we're talking about all the things that they can do to make the house look great for showing, but it's also really important for before the photos are taken so that what's going on online is showing really well. Um, so what I want to start with tonight is that what home staging is. So some people wonder, you know, is it decorating? Is she designing my house? It isn't any of those things. Um, if I go in and I do a decorating consultation with someone, it's typically to help them highlight and showcase the things that make them them. So they'll have collections and potential artwork and things like that that we're, we're spending a whole lot of time really personalizing their space. Um, whereas home staging is quite the opposite. We're preparing their house so that it appeals to the widest range of buyers, and that's both online and in person. Mm. So, I mean, in, in what I've heard in the past is you kind of want to unpersonalize the house. Is that, is that true, Amy? Absolutely. And I tell people, you know, at the beginning of consult, you know, when your house is prepared for the real estate market, it really doesn't feel like home anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's your goal because you really want it to appeal to everyone, not just to the people that would potentially like the things that you like. So you want to um, keep it open um, and kind of go for um, a neutral look. 
and neutral on all levels. So, um, you know, the walls neutral, um, design or decorating neutral. You want to keep it warm, but not too style specific. Mm. That makes sense, though, because it would be then it would be everybody can see what they if their furniture is different. If it's neutral, you can kind of visualize it, and if the walls are neutral. Is that is that true? Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, oftentimes, you know, a house really could use some freshening up before it goes on the market anyway, and a fresh coat of paint is an inexpensive way for people to have a huge impact on how the house shows. And um, I believe that's in part of the slides as well, so we'll get into that. You know, some of the, the top 10 tips that I would recommend, and obviously they apply to most homes, um, and it's, it's important to bring in a stager so that you have someone with a fresh perspective so that they can help you, you know, kind of make that to-do list of what needs to happen so that the house will show its best. I think that's so true. It's it's funny because I think people live in their houses and they become complacent and they and, and everybody lives differently. I mean, we've when we go and view houses to buy, you, you're kind of shocked sometimes when you see how some people live and they and they and they're fine. I mean, it's 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 not that it's bad. It's just it's just very different. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people's tastes are different, and it's it, it. I think it is very important if you walk into something that's very clean, very neutral. Um, you can you can walk into a spec house and know and know it's a spec house because it's neutral. Right. <laughs> so it makes <laughs> that's right. Well, yeah, and you well, touched I, on an important. Oh, go, go ahead, John. Oh, I, I was just going to touch base and say I, I you know it's, there's been a lot of studies done and first impression is very very important. If you don't get that first impression and get the the mindset that you want, so that people are going to want the house and desire the house, and then on top of that, when once they've actually started viewing the property. You want to make it so that they can actually see their furniture and their, you know, the way they're going to live within that property. So I think that, I mean, it can make, I mean, to me, home staging can can really make a huge difference in the price you can get for a house and how fast it sells. Absolutely, and there are statistics around all of that. Um, when people uh, do the home staging first, the house will sell faster. <laughs> you know, if you're and, and we all know if you're in the real estate industry, um, you, you know that first 30 days is critical. So making sure that that first impression is the strongest one possible is really important. So thank you for switching the slide because it, it segues into this. So home staging matters because, you know, 95% of buyers are beginning their search online. And even more than that, they're, they're starting on their cell phone. So telling the visual story of your home is really the key to success because if you're not um, evoking some emotional attachment to your house through the photos, people are going to swipe away from your listing as fast as they came to it. And it's that fast because we have apps now through Realtor.com where people are getting you know, these listings from their area, whatever their criteria was, they plug it in, they get their the house is sent to them and they can either swipe it to the right to keep it and swipe it to the left to let it go. Mm. So it's happening that fast. Wow. That's new. <laughs> I haven't seen yeah, it. And, wow. Yeah. So when we think about it, you know, we are such a visual society and the, the real estate industry is so different today than it was five years ago, ten years ago because the photos really do matter. Um, you know, there was a time when there was, you know, a couple pictures online that you could take a look at, and usually they were exterior photos. And now there's 36 photos, and in many states they're going up to 40, 42 pictures because people want to see every corner of the house through photos. That's amazing. Right. And, and, and you know they flash through them, so the first impression is just like first impression, first impression, first impression in every single room, and you need to make sure that, bam, it's there, every every, every room, right? Absolutely. And the, the interesting thing, too, is that basically what used to happen is, you know, a drive-by, you check out the neighborhood and all of that. Your drive-by and, and literally your first showing is happening online. Mm. 
<laughs> so that's where it's tough. And I think for people that may not even be on the computer, that they're not understanding the process with, with real estate, helping them to understand what the process is is so important to me because it helps put them at an advantage. If they understand, like, oh, everybody's going to be going online, they're going to be looking at my pictures on the computer, then, then they're more apt to say, okay, I'll, I'll do exactly what I need to do. Um, because they want it to come out strong. Yeah, I have a question, Amy. Do you think, and there may be studies and so forth based on this, do you think it's important to have fewer pictures or more pictures? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because some people say, you know, leave it to the imagination or let them discover something when they go. But I'm almost thinking you need a lot of pictures to compete. Is that, I'm not sure, though. You do. Yeah. You do. You definitely do. And it's tough because, you know, I've gone into very small homes, you know, even one that's, you know, maybe under a thousand square feet, it's tough to find 36 pictures in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so oftentimes um, realtors are adding what the exterior looks like if there's paths going off into the woods because you're also trying to sell a lifestyle in many homes and especially in our area. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you've got these beautiful pieces of property that people have all these benefits and views and, you know, trails and things like that. So the realtors are taking advantage of those types of photos as well. So people know what, what they're expecting. And, and that's another piece of this is there was a time when realtors would go in and if the house was really messy or um, overwhelmed with furniture, they would slide it all out of the way and take a picture. <laughs> and then slide it all back and take a picture the other direction. You know that I've talked to a lot of agents and we still laugh about how much time it takes to do that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Where to, today's buyer, they when they like a house, they are going through the photos enough that they have memorized what that house looks like in every space. Mm. So when they walk in and if it doesn't look the same, it's a negative. Mm. So staging helps people not only get ready for those photos, but really be ready for when people come through that they're going to see exactly what they saw in the photo. Mm. Wow. Do you, do you usually have professional photographers come in, or do you think it's, a realtor can, can take a good enough picture so that it's appealing? You know, it depends. There are um, realtors who are phenomenal photographers. There's no doubt about it. Um, but the majority of agents that I work with mm. have professional photographers on staff because they're very busy mm. and they want to have the professionals doing the work. That's why they call me in. Because mm. they, they've told the people what they need to do. They've told their sellers. But I come in and really help refine that to-do list. And then once they get everything out of the house that they need to, I can help them figure out what to do with what's left mm -hmm. to help it really shine um, through the photos. Right. Wow. So is there anything else you want to talk about for the, the pictures and the staging, or would you like to jump into the top 10 ways to spruce up your house? Yeah, I think we can jump in, and then um, I'm sure there's going to be other things I can add that apply to some of the things that we've already talked about. Great. So the first thing to do, obviously, you know, people are looking at um, the house online, but when they're coming to the house to actually physically walk through, curb appeal is going to be huge. And so that starts at the driveway. You know, make sure that um, the home number is visible. And I put that in there mainly because a lot of times I go to homes and I can't find them if the numbers on the road are mixed up. They're not necessarily clear, and my GPS isn't always correct. So until the, the realtor sign is out there, uh, it's important to make sure that the house numbers are clear. Mm, definitely. Um, you want to make sure the yard is cleaned up. And this time of year, it's important. There's a clear path to the door. There isn't ice um, and that kind of stuff. And one of the things that we talk about during consultations is if you have pets, make sure that the pet messes are cleaned up. And that's stuff we don't necessarily think about when we're living 
day to day. But it will be really important for when there's a serious buyer, they're going to want to walk the property, and then again, they will with a home inspection. Yeah, it won't go well if somebody steps in something that they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it's just not, you don't want people remembering your house because they stepped in it, you know? Right. <laughs> um, so those are the, some of the tough things that I'll address with people because you just don't think about it on a, you know, people do their spring cleanups in the yard and all of that, and and then in the fall, but when you're on the market, it's important that you're dealing with it, you know, weekly mm. to make sure that it's cleaned up all the time. Certainly. <laughs> um, and then obviously adding some seasonal plants and things like that where it's appropriate. You know, flowers and things like that just make it look homey and welcoming right from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, I, I know like in the fall, it's always nice to come and there's pumpkins or, um, you know, mums and stuff. That's always nice, especially when you're leaving summer <laughs> behind. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. And that's tough. I mean, this time of year it is hard because we don't have a lot to work with. It's not like we can put plants out that will survive other than evergreens and things like that. But even that works. Oh, yeah. Um, we can get creative. Yeah, something um, But it's certainly... The evergreens maybe with some lights or something would be nice. Yeah, it looks great. And it's that first sense of, you know, welcoming people in. That's why we do it in our homes. And you're hoping to welcome someone into their new house. Mm, nice. So that does make a big difference. Great. Um, Are you ready to for number so, nine? Yeah. So number nine is it's kind of a... Um, a piece of that curb appeal, when we talk about the entry, um, when you can, if it's the right season, you'll want to set up for porch and deck furniture. And um, again, seasonal plants. Oftentimes, it's a great idea to just add a fresh coat of paint to the front door. If it's just gotten faded, it depends on how the sun's coming in on it. You know, nothing says welcome like a great clean, freshly painted front door. Oftentimes I recommend red in different shades of it depending on what color the house is because it is very welcoming for people to have a red door. Um, and I also say, you know, if you have a wreath or something like that that you'd like to add or a welcome sign, that's great too. Or just simply investing in a new welcome mat is fantastic. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to, it would be nice to have a nice new one and not someone that's made through the winter season. <laughs> Some of them don't. <laughs> well, and that's it where I, you know, I often go in and the welcome is completely wiped off the, the mat. <laughs> you want to kind of screws it up a little bit. Again, and that's a minimal investment. That's something I, I tell people, you know, you don't have to spend a lot. You can find things like this that you can fill in right at, you know, a Christmas tree shop, you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you're you're making a great effort right at the get-go. Right. Just something fresh. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, it's the first thing they see when they when they go into the house. It's really the first thing they see really close up. So if it looks new, the door looks new, the mat looks new, it, it puts them in the, it primes their mind with, um, hey, this place is, is taken care of. So I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and there's, some, there's a lot to be said for that sense of, um, you know, that the house has been well maintained mm. because there's all kinds of, so you walk into a home that smells clean and fresh and looks that way too, you feel like this has been a well-loved home. Mm. You know, the, it, there is that psychological sense of a buyer that they're feeling this from the minute they walk in because they're using all of their senses and their emotion because people buy on emotion. So if they right. love it and they feel good there, that's what you want. You want to keep them feeling better and more comfortable as they walk through the house. Right. Excellent. And, and another thing, too, tips that I've had is, like, if you have a house that has a nice view at sunset, you want to, you know, make your appointments for sunset if you can so, you know, people see that type of thing and, and they go, oh, wow, this is really cool. Exactly. Right. And the photos should have that in it as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Nice. Yeah. And that was something that we, before, when we were talking about, like, this time of year, because it's hard to see when people have beautiful perennial gardens and things like that, I always say, you know, do you have some pictures of your 
gardening in full bloom because those are also great things to add to a listing so that people know there's a value to that mm. as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, people understand, you know, working on yard work and all that goes into putting in those perennials and having them look the way that they do. It's a, you know, long-term process and it's expensive. Mm, definitely. So <laughs> there's value in that as well. A lot of time yeah. invested in planting all that stuff, I know. <clears throat> I get exactly. overzealous every year, and John looks at me and says, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> like, okay, I'm done planting. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know you have to deal with it at the beginning and the end. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> oh, trying to get it ready. So you ready for number eight? We are, yeah. All so right. let's move on to the lighting. Um, this is going to be a really important part of setting the stage um, when you're listing the house because several homes, whether they're new or um, older, don't have overhead lighting in all the rooms. So it's really important to make sure that there are lamps added where needed, that all of your lighting is functioning properly because there's, there's always, you know, that light switch that just doesn't go to anything. <laughs> people want to know what it is, um, or you just can't find the light switch, those types of things where I'm addressing all of that with the client as well. Make sure that it's functioning well. Um, oftentimes, like your lighting in the bathroom with the fan, those often need to be replaced because they get really loud or they just need to be cleaned out. Those are the types of things that people look at that and wonder, is there a bigger problem when the thing is humming at me mm. during the showing? Um, so just taking all of that kind of stuff out of the equation of, you know, is there a problem? You don't want to even have people wonder if there's an issue. Mm. Um, I also recommend using uh, bulbs that are the highest wattage possible. So oftentimes people will in their lamps especially, put in softer bulbs so that it's a little more ambient lighting and it's soft and comfortable. But when you're staging, you want every corner lit up as much as possible. So I always say put higher wattage bulbs in wherever you can. Mm. Lights and bulbs. Uh, and another trick is, yeah, uh, another trick is to choose you know, just switch out your lampshades because there's so many varieties today that we like to have kind of that darker feel. If you throw on a white shade, it changes the whole look. Mm. That's a, definitely a good tip because I yeah. know I mean, brightness is important. It really is. And another um, type of lamp that works well is one that shoots up to the ceiling, you know, the bolt, the, um, I forget the name of it, but it, it's kind of a bowl that, sh that faces upward, mm -hmm. and you can usually get it in a fairly decent wattage, but when that happens, it bounces off a white ceiling, and it basically acts as though it's that overhead lighting. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really helpful if you have those, and, and you can invest in those. They're fairly inexpensive, like at a Big Lots or something like that. You can get them really inexpensively, but brighten up the spaces and this time of year is especially important because we're getting dark at you know 5 5 30 at night so if you've got people coming in for an evening showing you really want everything to be bright definitely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah right. all right we all right. ready for seven we're counting yeah. it down here we go we are so i walk in and i'll tell people our goal is to get closets and cabinets down to a 50% capacity and their eyes bug out of their heads <laughs> and they say, how are we going to possibly do this? <laughs> you know, we still have to live here and find our things and so, you know, right. I'll start slowly, you know, take it bite by bite. So I always recommend start by packing up all the off-season clothing, clothing that you don't need right now. So this is a tough season because we're kind of in the middle. Um, but you can start packing, you know, five of the six winter jackets that you may have. Um, boots, you know, hold out what you need, especially what the kids would need. And um, also have the kids choose, you know, maybe five of their favorite toys and pack everything else up. 
you know, I, it's hard when, when people have younger kids, they've got a lot of toys that, they, that keep them busy all the time. So it's trying to find ways to kind of tuck them away so that they're not the first thing that people see when you walk in. So oftentimes, oh, yeah. I'll recommend. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, the other thing is, too, when the buyers come in, and if your closets are all packed, they get the impression there's no storage space in the house. It gets them thinking about that. And uh, that can yeah. be a challenge, a challenge as well. Yeah, so they need room well, for their and stuff. It's, exactly. It's, it's especially difficult in older homes that really don't have a lot of storage. You have to get crafty with it. Um, and But packing as much as you can is so helpful, and it really does take away that sense that, oh, they don't have enough storage here. Yeah. Um, using up bulk items from a pantry, because a lot of pe people like to stock up. You know, that's just how we live. Um, especially rurally, we're going to the store maybe once a week, so we have a lot in the pantry. Um, but when you're using it, just don't replace it at the higher levels that you would have. Um, so that helps, too. It's just trying to, to go in the short term, and that's the goal is that they're not going to have to live like this very long if they've gotten everything um, pulled together and they're ready to go. Um, and, and on the flip side of this, when things are pre-packed in the way that we're talking about here, their move and transition when the house sells is that much easier. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from clients about that and the agent, like, wow. That whole process was a lot smoother than usual because they already had half of their things packed. Right. No, that's right. I, I, remember, I remember the one time we moved. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty interesting. <laughs> we had lived in a house for like 20 years. It was a, a lot of stuff that we didn't even know we had. <laughs> well, that's it, right? Like, you you don't even realize. I mean, we I think we still have boxes from when we moved into our house you know, almost 15 years ago that we've never even gone back to open up. Right. So it's hard to know. <laughs> Those boxes, should, they should never be open. Just put them away somewhere. <laughs> Just get rid of them. Well, that's it. I think, you know, organizers have a, a rule of thumb that if you haven't looked at it in six months, just don't look at it and throw it out. Like, you don't need it. Don't eat it. You, know, you right. don't need that, that stuff anymore, which is which is funny, but this is a good time when people are getting ready before they list the house. The, all those things like that they were planning to pass on to their kids or other people in the family, things they were going to donate, do it all at the onset so that when they go out on the market, they don't have to deal with any of that. Right. That's, it's, it's, right. A smart, it's a smart thing to do. That's for sure. Yeah, it, just, it does make things easier. Um, so the next one, number six, is all about window treatments. So long, heavy draperies should definitely be removed. And that, that's a tough one for people. If they're using those uh, window treatments for privacy sake, then we have to come up with some kind of solution, whether it's purchasing some basic shades so that they can still have their privacy. Um, but but still be able to get the heavy draperies out. Those are kind of a, a lower um, cost items that I'd recommend because you really want people to see what they're buying. And that includes woodwork, which in a lot of homes, there's some really intricate, beautiful woodwork, in, especially in older homes, that you want people to see because that's all part of the charm and part of the house, what they're buying. It also allows the natural light to really come into the room. A lot of people want to hold that back. Um, if I'm decorating with people, I always want them to hang those window treatments, you know, up higher and out wider so that all of the window pane is exposed, so that all that light's coming in. But that's not necessarily how my staging clients have their home set up. So um, we talk about that a lot. Um, one of the really important things is if there's a view and if it's being hidden, it's critical that the window treatments get taken away from it so that people see the view. Mm. Right, and I think um, you have yeah. pictures, right? Mm. Yeah. Nice. Here's, here's a great example. Um, so this home, when I went into it, all of these windows 
and the sliders were covered with um, those the, the rolled down insulated uh, quilts, mm. yeah. which are are very important for you know. She talked about the wind coming off the lake, and I said, "Oh yeah, I totally." You know, you need that sometimes. But when you're going out on the market, when you've got a treatment like that on a window, you're not only hiding the view, but you're screaming that the windows are inefficient. Right. <laughs> and she had, <laughs> she had replaced a lot of the windows, so that wasn't even the case. So it was really important, and that was a hard thing. It, it was a battle because she really didn't want to take them down. They just Velcroed on. Oh, okay. But it's a... It's, cumbersome and it's two levels of this house that this needs to happen. So mm -hmm. the, the realtor has their job cut out for them when they when they go in to take care of this. But it's really important because look at that view. Oh it's beautiful. I know we, we and actually that's what live you, like that too. I mean the wind when the wind comes it's it's rough. <laughs> it comes right <laughs> in. because um, we live at the end of the lake so it just kinda blows at our window, but I, I, I can totally see why you would need that. We have the, the accordion ones that can fold all the way up, um, and they're kind of insulated, oh, that's great. but they fold up into the window, so, yep. so it's it's better than, I, but I know exactly why they would want a quilt in front of the slider. <laughs> oh. Well, and those windows, they slide, you know, side to side. They're not easy to put a treatment like you're describing, mm. unless it was you know, on the outside of the window and that, you know, it's a whole other issue. But um, this was interesting. I also had another um, client on a different lake who just out of, it was a generational thing where you put the plastic on the windows for the winter. Oh, boy. And she put them on, they were same, same scenario where the windows were brand new, but the plastic she used was opaque. Oh, good. So you couldn't even see it blurry. Out the window, all you could see was this plastic, oh. and so that was that was an interesting conversation as well. But um, you know, and you don't think about it when you're just trying to live your day to day life. That's right. just what she's done for the last you know 40 years in her house. That's what she was going to do. Um, so that was um, it was tough, but it's it's going to be helpful in the long run for her buyers to be able to see what they're buying. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, one other thing I wanted to note when it comes to window treatments is a lot of people have lace in their homes. So I work with a lot of people that are downsizing and they're moving into, um, you know, smaller homes with less work to do around the yard and all of that. They have lace curtains. They're of a generation where they love lace curtains. But their target market are young families mm. coming to look at the house. So oftentimes I'm recommending that they change out the window treatments so that they're more appealing to a younger set because that's their target market. Right. And but on the flip side of that. Well, I, was that? Just, I was just going to ask what you would, rec what would you recommend? Just basic treatments, like a simple window treatment of a neutral color so it doesn't detract from things in a photo. So these pictures that we're looking at, if we had a neutral window treatment above the windows, mm. then it, if we put a red one in there, your eye would only go to that red window treatment and nothing else. You'd miss how beautiful these floors are finished. Mm. You'd miss the view because your eye would be completely taken to a bright red window treatment. Right. right. So it's that, that whole neutral stuff. But on the flip side of lace treatments, that's where knowing your target market is important because if I'm working in a 55 and up community with someone who has lace curtains, I typically don't recommend that they take them down. Mm. Their target market is going to be the same, so it makes sense. So those are all the things that we're talking about when I'm working with the agent and talking about who are you reaching out to here because the targets are all going to be different. Right. That no, makes sense. 
Yeah. So are you ready for number okay, five? Okay, so on to, yeah, number five. All right. So um, <laughs> oftentimes you'll see on the corners of homes, especially with pets and kids, that there's little fingerprints that are running around the corner on walls and there's, you know, where the dog has kind of rubbed up against the wall on the way out the door, um, those types of things. So high traffic areas, I always recommend that the paint gets touched up. If there's um, marks on the walls, typically they'll come off with magic eraser. There's nothing like magic eraser <laughs> to take care of some of those um, items. <laughs> They're really great for around door handles where we're constantly hitting our hands around the handle. I don't think there's a house that I've gone into that didn't need just a quick wipe down around those handles just to clean it up and have it look fresh. Um, if it's scuff marks and holes or um, it's... Um, Faded, like if they've taken some artwork off the walls and you can see the difference mm. in, you know, where the artwork was, that's when I'll recommend paint typically. That makes sense, yeah. Um, also paint, yeah, and paint in really bright, um, super saturated colored rooms. It's really hard for people to not want to change that. So if you're able to neutralize it ahead of the listing, it's another one of those things where they're not going to offer you less for your home um, if it's already taken care of. Right. If it isn't, and there's three bedrooms with all different colors and stars on the ceilings for the kids and all of those things, then they're, they're going to want to offer you less because they know that's a lot of work to change it, to neutralize it, to you know what they're right. going to be and plus, more plus attracted see, to. Right. Plus, when they see work, they don't want to come into the house. Cause they, they're, they're looking at it as something they just want to move into turnkey. They don't want work. They don't want to buy work. That's, that's probably why they're moving. <laughs> that's absolutely the case, right? And so we were talking about that earlier today um, at a meeting I was at where you know, target markets are, you know, big target markets are your first-time home buyers, which is the millennial market, <laughs> and then you've got um, baby boomers just flooding the market and getting ready for retirement and all of that. So those are two big uh, demographics to, to be focused on. And for those millennials coming in, they're in a very different place than all of us were when we bought our homes in that they've gone to college and they have enormous debts that they're trying to deal with, <laughs> with college costs and things like that. So they're not only buying the house, but typically if it's a couple, they're both working because they're trying to deal with loans and things like that. Um, and they really want move-in ready. And they're willing to pay the premium for it because they know if they have to hire someone, which they will, they're, if they're going to pay that much more to get it taken care of. Right. So those are some things for people to, to consider. And, and all of the people that I talk to that are downsizing are saying, we're done with the fixer-upper. You know, we've done this our whole lives. We, we've lived in our house 40 years and done all these beautiful things and, you know, grew our families and love it. But we just were tired. We don't want to do that anymore. And they want to go to more of a condo type setting. So on, on that end, they want those move-in ready homes and they will pay for it. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's very right. interesting and, and to I think about. Right. And the other things too, I, I don't know if anybody knows, I used to be a home inspector, so I would walk around a lot with clients buying houses. And, you know, this, you know, as a home inspector, you're always pointing out, you know, some of the biggest things you're pointing out is regrouting stuff, caulking in bathrooms. Um, mm -hmm. and whenever there's a light out, you, you have customers wondering if there's a wiring problem, right? They don't, right. They don't, oh, oh, this house has wiring problems. It's like five light bulbs out. Um, so... So things like that, I think, yeah. And like you said earlier, the noisy exhaust fans. 
oh boy, that's, you know, they think that that's a real problem. Right? Exactly. Exactly. You know, and for some people, if they can't go in and update an entire bathroom, which, you know, the return on investment for that is just not there to completely redo a bathroom. But if you change out a lighting fixture and the, and the um, faucet, it completely changes how it looks. And in the eyes of the buyer, there's been an update there for you that you've lived in that house for 20 years and, and uh, wish you had done it. Like oftentimes people will change it and say, oh, we should have done that <laughs> 10 years ago. That was great. <laughs> right. I mean, like even hard water stains on some of the fixtures and stuff, I mean, that can just make it look yucky. Um, for lack of a better term, but if you have a brand new fixture, it makes you feel, oh, I mean, it's shiny and um, not dull, and so I could definitely see that. Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't, I didn't realize what time we were getting to be out here, so I'm going to continue on <laughs> to number four. To number four. <laughs> yeah, I told you I could talk about this all day. <laughs> So number four, I have as remove personal items and collections. Um, family photos, I always recommend to take them out um, for all kinds of reasons. Um, but more, most importantly, a buyer wants to come in and visualize themselves there. And it's very hard to do that with your entire family staring at them. Yeah. You know, oftentimes people have these beautiful walls of memories, and these could be family trips overseas. Even I get caught up because I could be there all day hearing about all these wonderful stories about where people have traveled and things that they've done, and um, it's hard mm. because it's taking a lot of yourself out of the house when you take out family photos. Um, what I'll tell people is you know you're motivated to sell when taking out the family photos is not the end of the world. Right. Yeah. I mean, and when you start to do that, like you said, I mean, it's already yeah. packed away and it's ready to go to the next house. So, you know, you almost right. have to think, I would say, that the house isn't yours anymore, right? You might, you might want to think, it, you know. That's it. Your, yeah. your home becomes a product that you're now part of the marketing team to sell. Yeah. And this is all part of it. That that would be the home seller's part of that marketing um, program is, okay, so my job is to clear this all out so that everyone can come in and feel comfortable. It's relaxing, but I'm not feeling like I'm invading someone else's home because all their family photos are here. Right. Um, expensive collections is another huge one. Um, this can run the gamut from things like gun, guns and ammunition. Um, often people will have gun cases and things like that out. All that stuff is going to be in photos. Right. So that's something that's going to be out on the Internet. I highly recommend that people put those things away. Find china, collectibles, dolls, and toys um, because kids are totally drawn to things like that. Right. Um, jewelry, uh -huh. any books and artwork, like those are all things that you don't think about necessarily, but should be should be either packed or just tucked away. Good advertising for the thieves. <laughs> and that's just it. It's not like you can say, I only want my listing to go out to, to the people that want to buy it. It's just out there. And it's, it's then, you know, it's on, on the local MLS system, the multiple listing, and then it goes out to Realtor.com and Zillow and truly a, picks all of them up within days. Um, so anyway, the last thing on the list is taxidermy. So we have, we live in an area where there's a lot of hunting. So people have these beautiful um, heads and things that they mount on the walls. Um, because we have such a hypersensitive society, it's very tough. I always recommend that if taxidermy can be put away, I highly recommend it. Yeah. because you'll have people that just can't take it. Yep. Um, and you don't want to lose a buyer no. over it. Definitely <laughs> so, not. <laughs> um, you know, right, and I'll say to people, if, if you only want to appeal to hunters, then leave it. If you want to appeal to everyone, then pack it now, because it makes a difference. I'll tell you, <laughs> I went, and I half went into a single-wide trailer and there were 
six deer heads <laughs> hanging in the living room. So I I level only in New Hampshire. Like, <laughs> only in New Hampshire, I'm telling you. And the hard part about that and the feedback that I gave was that those the the heads on the wall came out two to almost three feet off the wall, which meant that they you lost all of that square footage of where people could even walk or move. Like they couldn't picture furniture there. It was it's the it was difficult. Yeah, the intervals yeah. are like four, fourteen feet wide to start with, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough. It was a tough one, but um. So anyway, that's just something for people to think about. <laughs> That is a funny one. Um, so on, on to the top three repairs that result in the greatest return. I pulled these three from a home gain survey that's taken um, each year nationwide um, to give you some return on investment um, stats, which I think is important. Lightning and brightening, we've talked about all of these things, making sure light bulbs are bright, losing window treatments that are blocking the light, and painting, you know, dark or overly saturated colored rooms a lighter tone to neutralize it, your return on investment on those things is 572%. Wow, that's that's incredible. And it's don't, simple. Don't certain colors also make the room look bigger or smaller? So. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And those are the things that we would talk about based on what else is in the room, flooring, um, in kitchens, like countertops and things like that. So it's hard to say just pick this color and paint it because it's not necessarily one color doesn't fit all. You really want to highlight some of those things, especially countertops and things. So it's important to talk to a professional about what color do I put in here to really bring out, you know, the look in this countertop that's granite, you know. So it's helpful to get some advice on those. Fantastic. Yep. So the next one is um, home staging, uh, working with a professional to get your fresh perspective. I walk through and I say, I'm the eyes of your buyer. I'm going to give you all these information, all this information about what may come up for people. We, we deal with function, and focal points are always addressed so that we can really make sure that people are seeing what we want them to. So, um, you know, I walked into a house, they had the, the couch in front of a door that was an exit to the house, but they just didn't use it that way. <laughs> so those are the things we focus on is, you know, get the stuff away from the door because what you said here is that I, we have nowhere else to put the, the sofa. Yeah. Right. So, you, yeah, you want to um, be able to show that all spaces have a functionality and one that works. Right. So return on investment for that was 586 percent. Wow. That's a great one. And yeah, I, yeah, so I have some, some pretty before and after ones here. Yeah. So this was a really great example of um, positioning the eating area off the kitchen, which the home didn't have it anywhere else. There was no eating space. There was just a countertop at a, um, on the kitchen counter. And so we had to clear all this out, added a window treatment, coordinated everything with the other colors that they had in the house, and it shows beautifully now. You see a lot more of the flooring. That um, wicker set was really beat up and looked bad. We spray painted it white, It was, and we covered those seats quickly with a staple gun and some fabric from Joann's, you know, like, oh, wow. it, it doesn't have to be high ticket things that can make a big difference, um, and just pulling artwork and things from other rooms, and it, it really made a big difference. Oh, that's a, that's a great one, um, and you have another one here, whoops. Yeah, little, so the next one was, this was a house, uh, this was a home that was a flipper had purchased. He'd had it on the market six months, and people were really having a hard time with this particular room, wondering how they'd arrange it, and they felt like there wasn't enough space there for their furniture. Mm. So uh, we brought in our furniture, artwork, um, and they had an offer on the house within 30 days after that. Nice. 
definitely. Yeah. It was yeah, really we, we've great. sold some new houses. And, and you, we've sold some new houses, and you, and you do see that. People come in, and they just, I mean, some people have really good spatial ability, and they can see furniture in their room and so forth, but other people have no idea. And um, I watch that percentage of the population, and I think just by putting something in there, they can, boom, all of a sudden, they, they have a good idea of what they can do with it. Well, it's so true. I mean, it, it, the statistics are staggering. I think it's somewhere around 10% of people can visualize it, where 90% cannot. So you've got to take the 90% to it because they really don't. And it's not that they're not trying. <laughs> you know, it's frustrating for sellers because they're like, they should just be able to see it <laughs> and get it. And they just don't. So, you know, it's all about those goals and how quickly you want to sell. These are the types of tools that you can use to help sell faster because it really makes it so abundantly clear that there's no doubt what's going on. Yeah, that's so much. That makes so much difference. I can see it. That's great. Yeah. So um, the the number one thing that people can do is free. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Cleaning and decluttering is the easiest thing to do. Return on investment of eight hundred and seventy two percent. Staggering. It's crazy, and it's something that I mean. Some people want to have a professional cleaner come in. That's fine. Sometimes they'll do that. If they're working all the time, they get the major like spring cleaning done, and then they're just dealing with the maintenance, which is great. Um, I always recommend using only fresh, clean scents, no artificial smells like plug-ins yeah. or Febreze, anything like that, because people wonder what you're covering up, because it's not a normal smell. Right. Um, if people have right. pets. You know, making sure that the pet bedding is being laundered regularly, more than what we would do on an average, um, you know, season, if you will. You want to keep all that stuff clean, carpets, vacuums, and then clearing all surfaces to remove the distractions. So right down to the cereal boxes off the top of the refrigerator, all of it matters. Right. Very mm -hmm. true. Those are great tips for sure. Yeah. And, and too, in, inside your cabinets and stuff, right, that, that might be helpful too. You have a lot of extra dishes and things like that. Yes. That you, um, you want to make sure that people think they have room in their cabinets and things like that. You're absolutely right. You know, that 50% for closets can apply to the cabinets as well. So trying to keep everything, you know, pack away the fine china. If you only use it once a year, just pack it away and then you know, the goal is to be sold within a short period of time and then you can unpack it and be all prepared when you're in your new home. Mm. Um, so moving on, the um, you know, buyers are looking for clean and well-maintained homes and they can tell from the minute they walk in the door. Um, they will pay that premium for move-in ready, which means that there aren't changes needed not painting or anything, and again, it goes back to that, give a neutral backdrop for them so that they can just see what they're buying instead of all of your things. Right. Right. So buyers are also uh, influenced by television programming. We all know uh, the HGTVs and the DIY networks. Most of them are all buying and selling shows right now. I would give anything for them to bring back home and garden programming to home and garden TV. <laughs> but they're they're trying to sell a show, so they have really snarky buyers talking about what they expect in homes. And I think, you know, from what I've gotten for feedback from the agents, they feel like a lot of buyers have that attitude um, where they have really high expectations, and that's tough. Um, so we're battling against that. Um, they're doing internet home shopping, so they're not even coming to the house unless they like it online. And and it is all about their emotional attachment and using all their senses. Does it look good to me, feel good, smell good in person? And all of that matters. Right. I mean, I, I, you know, I think of like when John and I are looking for an investment property or if we're looking for, for a house or whatever, and we'll look online and it looks great and everything. And then, it, and, I, and I almost think sometimes you do that and then you're almost ready to buy and then you go to the house and you walk in and that smell hits you in the face and you're like, 
Nope. <laughs> Next. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's, it's hard, so you know. It's it's a deal breaker. Yeah, and, I mean, and if you smell past, water. Yeah, I mean, you smell like a, it's it's like you know, especially up here. A lot of times, there's water issues, um, and you mm -hmm. smell that, and it's mold, and it's like, nope, um, nope. <laughs> Not doing that. <laughs> well, it, yeah, and you know, like sometimes it's it's okay mold that can be dealt with, and it's not a big deal. Right. But you can't get past that first impression. There's no way of taking it away. <laughs> you can't right. unsmell that. That's know? right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. And people are very scared of mold nowadays, so with all the bad press on it. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And most of the time, it really isn't a big deal that can be remediated and it's, it's not a problem but yeah it's tough it's um, true that's funny though yeah so final thoughts to consider is um, you know when people are getting ready to put the house on the market interview several realtors people ask me all the time who should I work with and I give them at least a list of three based on realtors I know in their area I think it's really important that people find the right fit because you this is a really important um, process that you're going through. You want to feel comfortable with this person. And um, you want to learn about their marketing programs. Find out, do they offer home staging so that you don't have to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Secondly, are they offering professional photography? Because those two things combined are what's going to help the house sell faster. Definitely. Um, and you want to make sure. Yeah, you want to make sure that they're they're getting the visual story, and not all photographers are created equal. So it's important that when they say, "This is my photographer," go and look at the pictures, because you can tell the difference between someone who is um, trained and knows how to take a, a great photo and has the right um, equipment for it, mm. versus someone who isn't. Right. So that's important too. Um, determine your Market, target market and appeal to them like we were talking about. You can plan to invest anywhere from 1% to 3% of your asking price on those updates if you want to get top dollar for the house. That's kind of the gauge that I give to people. That's the, you know, the money that you would make changes in the paint, um, update some of the faucets and lighting fixtures, things like that. And in most cases, people are investing less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you right. get a higher percentage. Yeah, I, I just I, I was just going to say it really increases the speed at which your home sells and, and tends to right demand a higher price just for that little bit of work. Absolutely, um, and the last thing is to check out your direct competition on um, Realtor.com or whatever um, you know um, real estate site that you like best because that helps people make a decision too if they are. They've got that 20-year-old house with no updates made at all, and their direct competition is a new build. Mm. They they want to start thinking about, do we need to put in a bit of an investment to be competitive? Right. Um, and, and a realtor can assist with all three of those things. So when they, when they look at that and say, what do you mean to figure out my target market? Your realtor will tell you, this is your target market. This is who we're appealing to, and it really you know, working in combination with the other professionals, it, it just makes the whole process easier for the sellers as well. They feel like, okay, people are paying attention, they're doing all these things to help me market, and then they're marketing online as strongly as they possibly can, which is great. That's great. Wow, that's fantastic. A lot of great information. Uh, you gave us a lot, Amy, for sure. <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so much to it, and every home is different. That's the tough thing. Like, I try to keep it as general as possible, um, but I'm, you know, happy to answer people's questions if they have any questions for me, um, well, I think you know, to, to, to help them with their process. Well, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is we can, we can call out for questions. I'm going to, let's see, oh, I have transitions here. Hold on. <laughs> um <laughs> So I do. I have a question. So um, sure. some of our listeners and so forth are like across the country, um, almost internationally. We have clients in um, other countries too. Do you possibly do like 
any photo reviews of homes or um, if somebody took a video of their home to offer suggestions or things like that, is that something that you would do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do have a service like that. Um, I, I call it e-staging because they send me an email with um, pictures. I can, I can address the photos that I see, which is good if you can get, you know, is like every corner of a room and adjacencies to other rooms. That's the only downside to trying to do it through the photograph. Yeah. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, uh, you know, back at the beginning at the introduction, I'm part of a, um, an international real estate staging association, which we have members all over the country. And that's a great resource as well. So if there were people that could that I would recommend, I could certainly do it that way as well. If people said I'd really like to work with someone face to face, it's easier for me. Um, that's also always an option. Right. Well, I think that that's, I mean, I was even thinking, I mean, that if somebody was just starting to think and like, you know, maybe they look at their house and they say, well, I think it looks great, but <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. and, and they have, you know, bags behind their couch and, um, and they just don't see it, I think, because they see it every day. So um, just to have that fresh eye look at that um, would be helpful. So I think that's great that you do that. I think that's a that's a super service for sure. Yeah, and it's a lot of fun too. Um, I can, you know, we can do so much with the Internet and with calls and things like that. Um, it just makes it easier to communicate with people all over the place. So. Right, so I have your contact information here. Um, I got it right. Great. Right. Is that right? <laughs> Everything looks right it is. to you? Looks okay, good. <laughs> so um, anybody can contact Amy for any of that information. I think she's given us a great, I'm so grateful that you came on today and um, gave us all this great information. Tons of things that you can do inexpensively to make your house ready to, to sell. So thank you so much, Amy. Thank yes, you so thank much you for, for having on. me. That was awesome. Do you have any, any parting words or anything, Amy? I just want to thank you both for inviting me to this. I am so passionate about the work that I do that, you know, I've said it more than once that I could talk about it all day. <laughs> so I appreciate any opportunity to reach out and talk with others about it and look forward to anyone reaching out to me if they want to email me with questions, um, call me anytime. I'm, I love to answer questions, so I'm available. Great. Well, thanks so much, Amy, and we, uh, this, this replay will be up soon, and a uh, podcast version also, so you can share this thanks, with Amy. everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So next time, well, this is, this is our contact information, so um, we, you can visit our blog at financialfreedomclassroom.com. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. We have Financial Freedom Classroom and post regularly to that. You can send your financial questions anytime to Sherry at financialfreedomclassroom.com. And if you got something out of this, which I'm sure you did, this is a fantastic talk about how to get your house ready, please share this with your family and friends that could use it um, so that everybody can benefit. And next time, we are on April 7th at 7.30. We are talking to Lanny and Alan Vavoid from Epiphanies, Inc., and they're going to talk about social media marketing. And in fact, I think uh, we're going to talk about social media domination. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. They are a great couple and are fantastic at what they do. So we're very, very excited to have them coming next month. So... Um, I want to thank you for spending your valuable time with us. And this is our view <laughs> that we want to keep oh. uncluttered. <laughs> so um, Beautiful. So this is one I might save when we're ready to sell, Amy. What do you think? <laughs> that's right. Make sure that's in the listing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so thanks, everybody. That was great. I appreciate it again, Amy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Take care. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good night, everybody.